Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range and uh, I'm back from Finnish Brutality 2021 and unfortunately not joining me directly in the room in this chair here but from the frozen north of Finland is Jenny of Varustaleka. Now uh, we were going to put a load of content out of uh, of Jenny's runs on all the stages at, uh, at Finnish Brutality but unfortunately there was a little hiccup on stage <laughs> one. A little. <laughs> So what, what's the short version? Mm, uh, uh, I can't hold on to my rifle. That's the short version. <laughs> so um, there's this cliche in practical shooting circles that there's two types of people in the world. There's those who've DQ'd and those who are going to DQ. And we've both DQ'd uh, mm -hmm. once in my case and in your case. Once how many in times Hatila, in? like a uh, couple of years ago. And then, uh, and then the other weekend. So what we thought we'd do is to sort of make this as a learning experience for everybody and uh, sort of see what's going through a person's head when it all goes terribly wrong. Because um, I've been there as well, as I just said. Uh, what we'll do is we'll show what happened first and then we'll discuss it. So if the technology gods will work for us, we'll uh, show you how it went. So you start in the driver's seat of this big Sisu armored vehicle and then uh, on the start signal you pop out the top of the hatch and shoot the dueling tree. Your rifle at this point is with a loaded mag but not made ready on the back of the truck. So you unload the pistol, show it clear, dump it in the, uh, in the box and then you jump out or crawl out slowly. Yeah, and then retrieve the rifle. And then the rule is dropped rifle on the stage is um, unfortunately a DQ and the RO has to retrieve it. Siitä on ihan kohvesta sarvet, kärjet märkänä lumesta. Sitten kohla siitä on pyssy kanssa ensin. Otin sitä eri lailla kiinni. Ja sitten se vaan lipsahti käsistä. Okei, okay, se oli siinä. Eipä hän tarvitse uira. When we were all standing there, we were all standing there and we all went... Oh. It was really unfortunate. Um, but right, let's now let you talk through what was what was going through your your head there. Uh, well, <clears throat> if we think about the start, like uh, even before starting the stage, uh, Samo shot my rifle the day before, and he got uh, many malfunctions with it. So I had to turn the gas block uh, screw like three hundred sixty degrees, and I barely got it to work. Then I noticed today that my pistol isn't zeroed there in uh, brutality, so that that might be the reason why I'm missing those. <laughs> then getting off the truck, I got snow in my hands on the roof or somewhere, then I blow into my hands like whoo, then I almost almost dropped my rifle first and then I saved it and I shot, shouted like to the arrows around me like it's okay it's okay it's in a safe direction and uh, yeah then I tried to take it again and it's really really slippery my hands are frozen and uh, full of half, half melted snow 
Yeah. Um, first question is, you weren't wearing gloves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I was supposed to wear gloves, but it's, it was like uh, three months since I trained with my pistol. And then I wasn't wearing gloves. So I didn't want to mess up my pistol shooting by wearing this. You'll, you'll see me later wearing these pink gardening gloves, which are really good for rifle shooting. But yeah, I didn't want to use those. And if we, uh, if we had shot rifle first and then pistol, then I would have shot the rifle with, you know, thin gloves that have really good grip. And then taken them off while running and then shot pistol. I, I can empathize with, with that because I had I had um, huge complex about shooting in gloves because um, I initially thought if I've got anything between my skin and the, and, and, and the trigger, it's just increasing my risk of a negligent discharge because I'm not going to feel it as well. And I made an effort during, during the summer to get over this by, by, shoot, by shooting in gloves. And to be honest, um, I found it improved the feel of a Glock trigger. But... I can fully fully appreciate why if you you hadn't been shooting in gloves you you took that risk. But if we if we spool back to the um, the footage, so the pistol shooting was after you finish the pistol shooting, it's then the 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 blow on the hands there, which you can, mm, yeah. which you can just see. And in preliminary discussions, in the, in the preparations for this, because we don't just wing it on bloke on the range except when we wing it, um, <laughs> which is most of the time. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that that was probably counterproductive. Yeah, because I, I had snow in my hands when I was grabbing the car. And then my hands felt cold. So I, without thinking, I blew into my hands and then the snow half melted and made my hands really slippery. But if mm. I just had like, you know, wiped them off on my, on my pants or somewhere, then they, it wouldn't have been that big of a problem. Temperature was but, around freezing, wasn't it? It wasn't, yep. it, yeah. Um, and then you, you've you got the rifle propped up on the bipod um, and then knock it with the can so it, it, fall, no, it falls I over. No, I knock it. I knock it with my elbow. Ah, oh, okay. I'm Sorry. Trying like to get can. the can. Yeah, and uh, uh, when like uh, somehow I thought that uh, I'll have the can in my left hand, and then my rifle in my armpit when I start running into the next shooting position. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> when I was trying to get the can with my left hand, I knocked the rifle with the elbow, and then I just forgot everything that I was doing. <laughs> just grabbed the can, and then grabbed the rifle, and I thought I had my fingers there really good, like, just a moment, I'll take my rifle, so I can explain yeah. it. We can, uh, it, this isn't being done live, so we can actually handle <laughs> rifles. See, right there, you get, yeah, you get your I had my finger. fingers, yeah, so, somewhere like this. So you grab the rifle and you actually got your finger under the under the hand stop there. Mm, yeah. Because I thought, yeah, that's gonna be safe. Like I can hold my rifle like this. See. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then I couldn't. <laughs> so it's only a very few seconds, but it's amazing how much actually goes through your head. At this time, when it all goes when it all goes horribly wrong, and you've got to reason all this, and and what you mentioned earlier, the standard thing of something goes wrong, and then everything just goes out the window. And yeah. But you were lucky enough that uh, you were allowed to embrace the suck on stage two, but not for score. Mm, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Everyone got the hypothermia patch after you know completing this stage. So when I saw it on everyone's chest, chests and uh, plate carriers, then I wanted that too. <laughs> so I got a special permission for special people to shoot this stage. <laughs> and you got to do it very in a very 
special way because you shot it the next day the only person who went in the water so uh, you had to break the ice which we'll show in a minute but the stage was called uh, Konun Suo if I pronounce that right yeah. Konun Suo Konun Suo what does that mean? Uh, it's a mm, it's a name for a swamp I don't remember where it's uh, like where it's from but Konun Suo is a swamp and Konun Suo okay. is just the name Okay, so now uh, we can embr we can embrace the suck. Um, so there was there was a lot of suck embracing solidarity here, but because you were the only person going into the swamp, there was ice. Yeah, and I had to, I had to break the ice while I was going from shooting position to another, and before that we were clearing the uh, the water from all those pool party toys we had. Ah, uh, yes. I wonder if the pool party footage will ever actually be released, because it was... <laughs> I'm not, not it sure probably it's... will in a short way. Ah. Uh -huh. yeah. so, so what we had to do here is we had three openings, um, and you could shoot one round through each opening, and the targets were sort of half-sized targets at about 50 meters. Um, and you had to move you, you couldn't shoot two rounds through the same opening. You had to, you had to keep moving back and forth. And mm. how hard was it moving the ice there? Because you're just moving it with your, with your legs. Yeah, it's uh, hurting me just watching this, <laughs> like breaking the ice. But after the, after the ice was gone, it was just like... Uh, um, I was listening to the arrow, sorry. So it was just a matter of getting your legs to work in the water and just focusing on breathing yeah and then it every uh, sorry go ahead sorry i was gonna i was gonna say it was hard enough the day before when it wasn't quite as cold and there wasn't ice mm -hmm. yeah if i could do something differently i would take the 20 round mag and uh, then i would actually focus on you know getting the hits because mm. there were actually only eight of us who got the full complement of 13 hits because you went you went for a full three minutes or 13 hits whichever came first yeah um, and this was uh, surprisingly difficult yes. for everyone and i thought it would be easier yeah yeah because in principle the shooting task is not that hard it's 50 meters it's not you've got hard something to all. rest on yeah but you're embracing the suck in a big way mm -hmm. Yep. A big thing for me there was, you know, keeping my hands dry because I knew that if my gloves got... Oh, there's a rubber ducky. <laughs> 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 um, keeping my gloves dry because I knew that if my gloves would get wet, then my hands would freeze, like, totally. Uh, um. I think I just em embraced getting wet, particularly as I'd slipped getting into the water and went in up to oh, my yeah, I saw chest that you anyway. Oh yeah, I saw that you were like, what? Oh, there was an awesome slow-mo that Varostaleka put on Instagram. Oh, <laughs> it was so cool. We were lucky to film that. We, we <laughs> got, the, got the moment on film. It was awesome. Um, but now, something you mentioned before was that you were feeling the waves. Yeah, because I, I have... Uh, what do I have? Like... Uh, What's my magnification there? Maybe four or something? Ah. Or even five or something? And I can I can see the waves on my side picture, like even the smallest ones. Okay. And uh, everyone like told me beforehand that there, there, there's going to be waves. And I thought, okay, I can, you know, go along. I can pr predict how the waves will come. But uh, that wasn't the case. Okay, because I couldn't see them, but then I'm bigger and heavier and was weighed down with TST gear um, and only shooting a, a red dot sight. And I've got uh, the silly meme pup, which performed like an absolute champ, despite being a very silly gun with a very bad reputation in the States. But it was <laughs> actually brilliant. Um, but that was interesting when you, when you mentioned that, but I could see how four power would, would do that. Did you have problems with the lenses fogging? No. Nope. Okay. Mine was a bit foggy at the start. I probably breathed on it, which is something mm. you don't... Because it, it was 
cold. It's Finland in uh, yeah. in late October, uh, but then it, it it cleared up luckily. But I mean, advantage of the red dot sight is worst case scenario. As long as you can see the reticle, you can shoot two eyes open if you really really need to. Mm. Um, but the, me and Carl have been ROing that stage in the pre match, and the rules seem to be that you could make one miss and still get 13. Two misses were starting to get limit and three or more and you were never never going to do it because you had to you had to move. And you ended up with nine hits, which would have put you in the group from 41st to 46th of the 97 who entered the water, uh, mm. which is um, actually you're one hit ahead of Ian. Ian got eight. Okay. I don't remember how many hits I got. I was just you got nine. On. Like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it wasn't the it wasn't the coldness. It wasn't the cold. It was the it was the like wet and the wetness and the weight of the water when you're trying to run there. And you know, I'm a couch potato. I'm not used to running <laughs> in, in waist deep water, so it was hard. I mean, um, what what we both did actually was take long, powerful steps. If you try and if you try and sort of go, mm. ch -ch 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 -ch, it doesn't work. Yeah. But if you go and muscle it, it can uh, <laughs> it can it, it, it kind of does. And you, I see you taking these huge, huge, great long steps. Um, where do you think the misses were coming from? I just wasn't focused enough on getting the hits. Okay, I'm not sure with and my. Then, I think I... then I, the raves were also like uh, unpredictable, and I could see that on my side picture. Like, at, and at one point, I tell the arrows like, "Damn!" Like, uh, I just had a perfect side picture, and now it's gone, and then it's a miss. <clears throat> but yeah, it oh. was mostly just here. Mm -hmm. My miss, I think I got sloppy, but. With with this thing, and it gave me problems on other on other stages. The height of the sight line over the ball line is massive, and shooting mm. through those openings on the other stage where there was where there were openings, I was bouncing rounds off the off the wood at the bottom of the ports, which yeah. uh, caused me to caused me to time out. But I don't think I don't think you were bouncing the rounds. Mm. I think those ports were flatter. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I was, because I, uh, I remember that the side picture was like just on the edge of the plate when I was, okay. you know, not getting the hits. When I was ah, like, the, hoping to be there. But yeah, the, the the fifty fifty <laughs> chance of hitting and not hitting. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was this the absolute suck, but it was kind of great, and it was certainly character building. Yeah, and the you, hypothermia I, patches. Do you have yours? I have mine. Yes, I have it. It's uh, it's on my plate carrier over there. <laughs> These were awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, you uh, said, you... This is the reason why I wanted to shoot that stage. Well, not the only reason, because it looked uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> But so, yeah. of, so of the remaining stages, which is the one you most regret not being able to shoot? Uh, not the Casarta Trill, I hate that one. <laughs> so that's also my second question, which is the one you're most glad you didn't have to shoot? <laughs> but uh, I would have wanted to shoot the first stage with the rifle. Yeah, that was a really cool, I think that was a really cool stage. You'd have, you'd have been we one of the few to spin the spinner. We tested that stage in May, and uh, I got like what 130 seconds or something. Nice. But nice. It, it wasn't. I don't remember if we had pistol in there. Ah, just the rifle component. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's been a yeah. long time. But I mm. think when I was arrowing it. With Ian on Friday in the pre-match, I think the fastest time was like 135 or something. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It also, the rifle part of that plays to your, your strengths as well. Yeah. Well, um, not, with... uh, well, but blade carrier makes everything more difficult. Yes. 
Absolutely, absolutely. As I discovered in Attila <laughs> in July. Yeah. Um, and it actually made a huge difference for me wearing my own plate carrier that I'd set up rather than a borrowed one. That uh, yeah. it, it bothered me far less. And uh, aside from Yari nagging me because my front plate is about that much lower than it technically should be. My, my, like, uh, my plate, the uh, upper edge is here where I have my collarbones. Mm -hmm. And Yari has Ma them like up here. Yeah, yeah. Mine's a little lower, so at the bottom of the plate sits on what used to be my dad bod Six pack. before I lost weight. <laughs> Six pack. Uh, <laughs> two pack. Um, it sits on a it sits on a little fold, uh, and I've been using I've been using it as a training aid for running. Um, so mm. I just left it set like that and borrowed some proper plates uh, from Varsaleka instead of uh, instead of bringing plates from here or training plates. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a big difference if you are used to using the gear you are actually using as matches. But, Absolutely. Uh, the one stage where you ev evacuated the casualty, I don't think I could have gotten him into the deca. I struggled. He, but yeah, then he I'm was a, I'm heavy. A, yeah, and floppy. Mm, yeah. Um, Vera did really good at getting him in. That was uh, she. She did it. She she did amazingly. But it's like if you if you get his head in and he doesn't flop around too much, it's not so it's not so bad. But I had a moment of, am I going to get him in? Am I going to just have to take the sixty second penalty? Because <laughs> I I mean I'm I'm an office monkey with noodle arms. Mm, the same. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, on so. on Sunday I was helping Arrow in that st that stage. Just to keep warm, and we were moving the casualty around, and uh, I thought that if I shot the stage, then maybe I would have climbed into the car first and then pulled him there. But uh, yeah, mm. he's uh, he had uh, like a chest trick, and the plate, uh, sorry, Mac pouches were getting stuck. On I the door. think if you try that, his head and his arms might have got caught around the back of the door. He was awkward enough from Maybe. below, and some of the str the strong guys just like flew it, flung him in there, yeah, like a dead cat, and yeah. uh, ran and from office... the car, like like ran from the evacuation place to the truck, and then like whoosh, with the same yeah. speed threw him in. Um, uh, I took Carl's solution, which was to not sling the rifle but to carry it, so that I could put mm. the put the rifle in. Uh, in the vehicle so that I didn't have to worry about the rifle flopping around on my back or my front or somewhere it didn't want didn't want to be while manhandling that thing uh, and I st and I still struggled and then had to like fold the poor guy in it's uh, <laughs> um, and poor old chappy on, fr on Friday at the pre-match uh, poor old chappy was resetting uh, me and Carl were running back alone. and forth he was doing um, it alone he was dragging the dummy pretty much alone back and forth so he, he was embracing the suck during the pre-match as well. Yeah. <laughs> but he did, he did sterling, he did sterling work. Um, how, but, how do you think the cold weather affected your shooting? Yes, it did. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in Switzerland, we're, 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 we're kind of fair weather shooters and uh, we don't shoot much in the cold. Um, mm -hmm. I took a lot of care to get my layering right so that I was comfortable, but not too cold at the start, not too hot at the end. Um, my mechanics gloves got wet and stayed pretty wet, but that wasn't too bad. Um, and on the second day, I was wearing, uh, wearing a poncho, uh, an alpaca wool poncho over the top of my gear, so that I wasn't having to take the plate carrier off to adjust, uh, to adjust layers, but it, it definitely has a huge impact and particularly being being wet in the uh, in the water park was mm. uh, was definitely an absolute absolute game changer I'm just glad that there wasn't a log in it that we had to get a head under I don't <laughs> want to give Yari any ideas for the summer <laughs> for the next one but uh, at least uh, at least in the frigid water in principle you only had to go in up to your waist unless you fell in like an idiot like me mm. yeah. hmm. So well, let's hope it's not snowing in the summer. It's Finland, but it can't be excluded. That's right. 
<laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, about uh, about layering. Uh, one unnamed Slovenian uh, didn't want to take his uh, long johns with him, and I told him like, uh, you don't have to wear them. Just take them with you to Lopi. And then he was like, thank you, Jenny, for making me do this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in the uh, in the in the in the pool stage, um, I was just wearing combat trousers and a and an Under mm, Armour shirt. Um, yeah, I told everyone to wear as little as possible because the when you get out, then the clothes like you have to get out of the cl- wet clothes fast. Yeah, it's only three minutes of suck plus the time it takes you to get out the clothes. Um, so your long johns aren't gonna or other layers aren't gonna help you if you were staying yeah. wet for. An indefinite period, they would, mm. but over the short period, they uh, they definitely wouldn't. So definitely did the right thing, and then uh, we were lucky enough um, that we had access to the to the lodge and the showers. Uh, but some guys bought yeah. a sauna, brought a portable sauna, which was cool. In the parking lot, yeah. Eh, how guys? The guys who organized the Hatila match. Yeah, that was that was super. That was super cool. <laughs> so, thank you very much for agreeing to talk about your uh, little mishap then and, uh, and, and embracing the suck in the pool. Um, Jenny's been on the channel quite a lot uh, already because uh, she participated in the footage with uh, at Hetela in the summer. And we're going to try and get her on the channel as much as possible in the future. So, uh, that's uh, l- looking forward to that. Uh, so, th- thanks Jenny for, uh, for being here. Thank you in particular to patrons who funded me being there. You, you funded me getting cold, wet and miserable and loving every second of it. So, uh, <laughs> if you're not a patron and you'd like to see me suffer, please consider donating to the channel because it really helps us to <laughs> fund the suck <laughs> and loving it. And uh, everyone else, just please like and subscribe and drop a salty comment. And uh, yeah, and we'll uh, see you again soon. Bye. Bye.